Hey everyone. Due to some circumstances, I'm going to be today's narrator. Thanks for your understanding, and please reply to the pinned comment below if you think I did a good job. Have you ever encountered a piece of architecture, a product, or even technology that was so bad you wondered how it ever got past the design stage? Well, it turns out our world is full of awful design choices, and if you ask me, it's about time someone called them out. So, from outrageously misleading product packaging to straight-up dangerous town planning, here are some designers who should go to hell for their ideas. In our modern world, most of us use computers daily, in some form or another, be it for work or enjoyment. Considering how often we use these things, you'd think the companies that design them would put some thought into making them as intuitive as possible. But that's not always the case, as evidenced by one laptop by HP, which sported a keyboard design with one facepalm-worthy error. Instead of placing the power button in an area where it'd be unlikely to be accidentally pressed, HP decided to put it here. Being right in the middle of some of the most commonly used keys, delete and backspace, means this power button is guaranteed to regularly cause some fury when pressed by accident. Nice job, HP. But bad design isn't always a matter of not being intuitive. Sometimes, a design is bad because of how irritating certain aspects of it are for people who like things to look perfectly neat. Take this misaligned ceiling light one web user spotted at their workplace, for example. Whether it had been moved there to leave room for piping in the ceiling or some other reason was not revealed, but it didn't matter. No explanation could have possibly justified such a violation of the worker's human rights. The human right of not having to be subject to irritatingly ugly design, that is. For a similar reason, one Reddit user was mildly infuriated by this mistake they spotted on their laptop's built-in speaker. That slight imperfection is undoubtedly one of those things that, once noticed, can never be unseen. But let me ask you this. If you purchased a laptop and found a mildly infuriating error like this, would it be enough justification to return it to the store? For yes, slap that like button in anger, and for no, calmly click subscribe. Or just do both if you'd like an easy way to counteract the rage-inducing designs of our world with the fun, fascinating entertainment we upload daily. But now, back to some terrible design choices. While that misaligned laptop speaker dot may have been a manufacturing fault, there are some pieces of mildly infuriating design that pass through several quality checks and still somehow slip through. Some of the most infuriating examples of this have been shared online in the form of DVD and Blu-ray box set displays. And fair warning, these box sets are a perfectionist's personal hell. Like this Harry Potter box set, which sports one of the pictures of the protagonist at the bottom of the DVD case's spine, despite all the others being at the top. What's more, not even the images at the top of the DVDs are printed at a consistent height. That type of inconsistency is even worse in this Sherlock box set, which would require a master detective on Sherlock Holmes's level to decipher what on earth the designers were thinking. Even if these original DVD cases were designed separately, would it really have been that difficult or expensive to have adjusted them for the box set release? As infuriating as a bad box set design might be, though, they're very minor issues compared to bad design choices that actually affect people's daily lives. And an exceedingly bad example of this was shared with the internet in 2020, after being spotted by a Redditor walking in downtown Los Angeles. An insanely bright LED billboard had been put up on a building, advertising products with enough intensity to completely illuminate the opposite building. Whether the building across the road from the billboard is apartments or offices, I highly doubt the people living or working inside were too pleased with this eyesore burning brightly through their windows. After all, neither working nor sleeping would be easy with that thing out there. Now, I'm all for some colored mood lighting, but typically, I like to be the one choosing the colors, not some monstrous glowing billboard in the street outside. The only way to make this slightly less awful would be if someone hacked the billboard screen to play Netflix for all their neighbors. That I could get behind, as long as I had the remote control. Intrusive advertisements are only one of the ways the spaces of towns and cities can provide examples of terrible design. A lot of the time, equally bad instances occur as a result of lazy, just straight-up dumb town planning. 
Like this bridge, which was constructed with no thought for what might happen to it when it rains. With no drainage and a design that slopes downward toward the middle, the bridge badly floods in heavy rain, forcing those who need to use it to shimmy across. Now, this might be fun for someone desperate to try out their new kayak, but not so much for elderly folks who have enough trouble walking on solid ground. But those problems didn't seem to matter to the devilish designers behind this pathetic excuse for a walkway, who seemed to forget that a bridge over water is generally supposed to keep your feet dry. Arguably even less convenient than a soggy bridge is an ATM that's built too high on a wall to use. But this is a problem witnessed outside a surprising number of banks in various locations around the world. This occasionally happens as a result of measuring errors in the planning stage, sometimes resulting from the banks being located on sloped roads with high walls that aren't double-checked before constructing. It's a perfect example of how hilariously bad certain designs can turn out when communication, or just common sense, is lacking at a specific stage in the process. Before banks can get these errors fixed, people are forced to turn to creative approaches to get their money with hilarious results. Now, that's a sign of a true friend, someone willing to literally pick you up when you're feeling low. Low compared to the ATM, that is. But sometimes bad infrastructure design goes beyond merely inconvenient and into the realm of legitimately dangerous. And if these next examples are anything to go by, it's often bicycle users who get dealt the roughest hand. Like this Dutch bike path, which leaves a very fine line between cycling and swimming in the canal. Either this was a joke, or Dutch people have superhuman balance to be able to ride along there. Even worse is this elevated bike lane, which seems to suggest the city planning division doesn't deem cyclists quite as worthy of a safety railing as their walking pedestrian counterparts. Or maybe this city's safety codes count canal water as a soft enough landing to be considered a satisfactory safety measure. Or maybe they just don't care at all. This bicycle lane, meanwhile, seems to have actually been built with cyclist safety in mind, though the execution is laughably bad. It features bumps seemingly designed to keep cars from barging into the cyclist path, but given that the bumps are painted white rather than a more distinguishable color, they run a serious risk of being collided with. Considering most people using the lane will be traveling at speed, you can easily imagine a bike slamming straight into one of these, sending its rider over the handlebars, possibly even into the road. Plus, even though cars shouldn't be using the lane, one that did could sustain some serious damage from not noticing the hard-to-spot humps. It seems a little harsh to me. But town planning committees aren't the only ones guilty of hilariously bad design choices. People make just as many within the spaces of their own homes, like the contractors responsible for building the bathroom in one Reddit user's dad's house. At six foot one, the Redditor was way taller than the ceiling, something he'd rarely encountered before. But the house's builders seemingly operating under some kind of vertical restriction that prevented them from making the room any higher, decided to dig a head hole into the ceiling for any extra tall urinators. Better than nothing, I guess, and definitely better than the placement of this toilet, which was built right in the middle of an apartment staircase. With limited space and very specific restrictions on where the waste pipes could go, this was seemingly the only spot in the cramped apartment for a bathroom. Luckily, the stairs turned restroom were within an enclosed apartment rather than being in a public stairwell. Not that it would make it any less unpleasant to pass by your roommate on your way out while they're relieving themselves. Moving on from physical obstacles that prevent pleasant and convenient usage to virtual obstacles now, in a video about awful design, I'd be remiss not to mention dreadfully designed digital adverts. You know the ones I'm talking about, the ones that pop up on your screen and make it almost impossible to do anything without accidentally clicking a link you never intended to. Like this one someone encountered in the Sonic the Hedgehog mobile app. The developers made the diabolical decision to place the advert activation button overlapping the movement controls, meaning accidentally tapping it was almost inevitable while playing. As if taking damage in-game and losing all of Sonic's rings wasn't already infuriating enough. 
Other seemingly fun apps serve their contract with Lucifer by deceiving users, usually kids, into spending money. Like in the Pokemon Go app, where you can purchase 100 Pokecoins, the in-game currency, for 99 cents, or 550 Pokecoins for 7.99. The creators of this swindle rely on the fact that very few people would take the time to work out that you could actually purchase 7 of the 99 cent packs and get 700 Pokecoins for $7. That's 150 more Pokecoins for a dollar cheaper than the 550 Pokecoins offer. This sneakiness continues all the way up, with it still being cheaper to purchase 145 of the individual 99 cent packs, receiving 14,500 Pokecoins for $143.55 than it would be to acquire the same number with the $159.99 offer. While paying for virtual money in apps is arguably not a smart choice to begin with, that doesn't give developers the right to prey on people unable to notice they're being swindled. But even when you're on the receiving end of virtual sleight of hand of this kind, you're still technically getting what you pay for. The same can't be said for when you buy a decent-seeming product in real life, only to find it had been designed to save the company costs while sacrificing quality. One Redditor encountered a particularly infuriating example of a company cheaping out on product materials, only for the consumer to pay the price in 2019. While enjoying a bowl of tasty leftovers, the plastic handle of their spoon broke. Now, this wouldn't have been so bad, except it turned out the spoon's handle had been artificially weighted with sand to make it seem higher quality. This resulted in not just a broken spoon, but a tragically ruined dinner for this unfortunate owner. Couldn't the devious company responsible at least have filled it with salt and pepper? A similar case occurred for another Redditor back in 2011, shortly after they purchased a punching bag from China. After sustaining a disappointingly small number of punches, the bag split, revealing what it had been filled with. Trash. Yep, literal garbage was spilled all over the floor of their garage. For this deceptive form of recycling, not mentioned in the product description, the company had acquired all sorts of random shredded junk and used it in place of proper padding. That likely made it super cheap to produce, as did the clearly inferior quality of the plastic fabric holding the whole thing together. All in all, it was an awful punching bag, but a slightly better piñata. While that punching bag may have been pretty useless for its intended purpose, at least it could be punched a couple of times before disintegrating. This kickball, again from China, was arguably worse. While the text on its surface labeled it as kickball, the back of the ball also had written on it in tiny text, not for kicking. Talk about false advertising. Maybe this company makes other products like chewing gum that's not for chewing or boots that aren't made for walking. Then there's these hilariously dumb earphones, another of China's finest, which claim to have Bluetooth functionality while also never needing to be charged. How's this possible? Well, because they require being plugged into your iPhone to use. Now, you may assume these are simply standard wired headphones with a fake Bluetooth label to increase sales, but it's even dumber than that. These earphones actually do connect via Bluetooth. The cable's there for power supply only. But seeing as Bluetooth audio quality, which is transferred via radio waves, is almost always inferior to audio from direct cables, these always plugged in insults to the audio industry are the worst of both worlds. But hey, at least they can claim the title of Bluetooth earphones that never run out of charge. From useless products, now we move to unbelievably wasteful packaging. Various examples of this have been shared online, like this tiny micro SD card, for which the standard packaging was already unnecessarily large, but the shipping box was simply ridiculous. The same could be said for this box, which looked like it had been hastily and lazily stuffed with packing paper, all to transport this tiny bottle of nail polish. And while this seems ridiculous, and it arguably is, this kind of ridiculously oversized packaging has to do with the shipping company's automated systems. When the system calculates that a transport van won't be filled up enough to stop packages sliding around and damaging the products inside, 
they package smaller items in larger boxes to fill the gaps. So, technically, it's in the interest of the customer, but that doesn't change how eye-roll worthy it is to receive so much more cardboard packaging than you need. But not all unnecessary packaging is justified. One Reddit user, for example, ordered a single metal bolt and received all of this packaging. As nice as the thank you card is, it's hardly necessary, and neither is the rest of the excess card, paper, or plastic bagging. Even worse is this lip balm, which comes in non-recyclable plastic packaging 12 times its size. While this may be a theft prevention measure, reusable theft prevention boxes do exist and would be a much more environmentally friendly alternative. The company should certainly consider it because this much wasted plastic isn't just lame, it's lamer. The same excuse of theft prevention is used for these teeth whitening strips, which take up an unbelievably small percentage of the space inside the box. I can't help feeling like the size of the box may also have something to do with making customers feel like they're getting their money's worth, given that this box costs an eye-watering $50. But if you want to avoid having bad teeth, you could just eat these Chinese strawberry-flavored cotton candy snacks to satisfy your sweet tooth. Sounds counterintuitive, I know, but you won't need to worry too much about the sugar content because when you open the packet up, you soon realize how little you actually get inside. Infuriatingly, there's only just enough to fit in the packaging's window. The rest of the intentionally oversized packaging is nothing but plastic clearly intended to trick potential buyers into thinking they'd get more for their money. The manufacturers of this novelty-sized tube of Warhead Sour Candy, meanwhile, didn't even bother to fill its empty space with anything else. Instead, the manufacturers simply filled the tube up to the letter E and deemed it enough to justify that extra-long packaging. It seems the candy is only a fraction as sour as the people who make it. Equally scandalous is the inside of this sweet poppy seed pastry from Eastern Europe, which couldn't be more disappointing when compared to the generous filling advertised on the packaging. Let's just hope that was a manufacturing error, shall we? The deception in the packaging of this banana-flavored milk, meanwhile, is most definitely not a manufacturing error. In fact, the packaging has been specifically designed to mislead people into thinking they're getting a full cup's worth of milk. But all is revealed when the cup is turned upside down or emptied out, revealing it was only two-thirds full to begin with. With a tinted top, this shameful deception leaves a very bad taste in your mouth. You better hope the banana flavor is worth it. But despite the quantities of those products being abysmally lacking, at least you get some of what you pay for. That wasn't the case with the unfortunate customer who purchased a personal pizza from Subway after seeing tasty-looking adverts like these. What they actually received, however, looked more like someone had tried to mop up old curdled milk with a tortilla. On the bright side, at least after seeing that, they probably weren't hungry anymore. But it's not just in food and drink products that this type of misleading design is used. An almost identical tactic is used in a lot of skincare and hygiene products. Take this brand new bottle of gel face wash, for example. Looks like you're getting a good-sized bottle of this stuff. Until you tear the label off and see what it's hiding. The bottle's actually only half full, but the oversized container is designed to make you feel like you're getting more value for your money, encouraging you to spend more than you might on a smaller bottle. Similar instances of companies using labels to cover up empty space that consumers would reasonably assume to be filled with more of the product are often found in shaving razor packaging like these razor packs, whose label hides the empty slots where you might assume extra replacement heads would be. The worst part is, both products actually have the spaces in their plastic storage cases for more replacement heads, though I guarantee if you ask the company for their official stance on the matter, it goes something like, We like our customers to be able to bring their own replacements. After all, we know and respect how important independence is. Sounds pretty reasonable, right? We've seen a lot of awfully designed products aimed at adults, but even children encounter their fair share of devilish designs. Like the girl who asked her parents to buy her this sizable-seeming swimming pool for summertime. The look on her face upon taking it out of its packaging and seeing how small it actually was just says it all. False advertising is one surefire way to give a kid trust issues. 
Other bad designs aimed at kids, meanwhile, just wind up being plain disturbing. Like this Pokemon backpack, which looks perfectly fine from this angle, but when multiple of these cute plush toys were presented on a store shelf, they ended up looking more like Pokemon protagonist Ash had undergone a Kim Kardashian-level butt enlargement surgery. I mean, if you've got it, flaunt it, but maybe not in the kids' aisle? Even more likely to traumatize kids, though, is this nightmare-inducing Dora the Explorer ride at a fairground. I doubt many kids would enjoy the idea of their favorite cartoon adventurer having her back scooped out for them to sit inside. Uh, who did this to you, Dora? Who did this? Sometimes, though, the full weirdness of bad design aimed at children is only apparent to adults. That's the case with this slide, which most kids probably see as a simple source of fun, while adults would probably feel uncomfortable crawling into a giant statue's rear end. I sure hope it's clean in there. But that slide is far from the worst example of lighthearted characters used as a way to make everyday things a little more fun that went terribly wrong. No, God! That title falls to this absolute crime against humanity found at a roller skating arena, which is intended to look like Superman is holding up a water fountain. Unfortunately, that's not all it looks like, but I'll leave it to your imagination to figure out how this might be perceived as inappropriate. The only thing more embarrassing than being seen near that monstrosity would be being caught in public wearing these jeans. With a bleached and dyed effect running up the outside of the leg, it seems the designers neglected to consider what the inner leg would look like when left in the jeans' original dark color. Look, I know high fashion is all about pushing boundaries, but I refuse to believe the I just peed my pants chic is in this year. Putting the badly designed attire back into the dresser now, it's time to take a look at some of the more devious designs of all. Misleading price cards. I'm referring to the big, bold text you see printed and hung inside and outside stores, intended to lure you into a purchase. They seem to promise bargains, only on closer inspection, you find the real truth. Usually some kind of catch hidden in small print. Like this sign, for example. Everything 99 cents sounds amazing, until you see it actually says everything 99 cents and up or less. That hilariously vague choice of words means literally every price can be covered from one cent to a million dollars and beyond. At least they covered all bases. Similarly, this parking garage in Los Angeles seemed to offer a pretty good deal with $4 parking. Though still expensive, in a major city, that's not a terrible price per hour. But of course, it wasn't per hour. The teeny, tiny small print on closer inspection revealed that they were charging $4 every 10 minutes. Given that the text was so small, it was unlikely to be spotted by motorists looking for a space, the designer responsible for this has truly earned their place in hell. What's the most unfriendly or just plain bad piece of design you've ever encountered? Let me know in the comments below, and as always, thanks for watching.